New Orleans, locally, French, La Nouvelle Orléans La Nouvelle Listen is a consolidated city parish located along the Mississippi River in the southeastern region of the U.S. state of Louisiana. With an estimated population of 393,292 in 2017, it is the most populous city in Louisiana. A major port, New Orleans is considered an economic and commercial hub for the broader Gulf Coast region of the United States. New Orleans is world-renowned for its distinct music, Creole cuisine, unique dialect, and its annual celebrations and festivals, most notably Mardi Gras. The historic heart of the city is the French Quarter, known for its French and Spanish Creole architecture and vibrant nightlife along Bourbon Street. The city has been described as the most unique in the United States, owing in large part to its cross-cultural and multilingual heritage. Founded in 1718 by French colonists, New Orleans was once the territorial capital of French Louisiana before being traded to the United States in the Louisiana Purchase of 1803. New Orleans was once the third most populous city in the United States, and it was the largest city in the American South from the antebellum era until after World War II. The city's location and low elevation have historically made it very vulnerable to flooding, leading to the installation of a complex system of levees and drainage pumps. New Orleans was severely affected by Hurricane Katrina in 2005, flooding over 80% of the city and causing a population decline of over 50%. Since Katrina, major redevelopment efforts have led to a rebound in the city's population. Although, concerns about gentrification, new residents buying property in closely knit communities, and displacement of longtime residents have been voiced, the city and Orleans Parish French, Parois d'Orléans are coterminous. As of 2017, Orleans Parish is the third most populous parish in Louisiana, behind East Baton Rouge Parish and neighboring Jefferson Parish. The city and parish are bounded by St. Tammany Parish and Lake Panchartrain to the north, St. Bernard Parish and Lake Bourne to the east, Plaquemines Parish to the south, and Jefferson Parish to the south and west. The city anchors the larger New Orleans metropolitan area which had an estimated population of 1,275,762 in 2017, making it the most populous metropolitan area in Louisiana and the 46th most populated in the United States. Topic. Names The city is named after the Duke of Orleans, who reigned as regent for Louis XV from 1715 to 1723. It has many illustrative nicknames. Crescent City alludes to the course of the lower Mississippi River around and through the city. The Big Easy was possibly a reference by musicians in the early 20th century to the relative ease of finding work there. It may have originated in the Prohibition era, when the city was considered one big speakeasy due to the government's inability to control alcohol sales in open violation of the 18th Amendment. The city that care forgot has been used since at least 1938, and refers to the outwardly easy-going, carefree nature of the residents. History Beginnings. La Nouvelle Orléans, New Orleans, was founded in spring of 1718. May 7 has become the traditional date to mark the anniversary, but the actual day is unknown by the French Mississippi Company under the direction of Jean Baptiste Le Moyne de Bienville on land inhabited by the Chitimacha. It was named for Philippe II, Duke of Orléans, who was regent of the Kingdom of France at the time. His title came from the French city of Orléans. The French colony was ceded to the Spanish Empire in the Treaty of Paris 1763. During the American Revolutionary War, New Orleans was an important port for smuggling aid to the rebels, and transporting military equipment and supplies up the Mississippi River. Beginning in the 1760s, Filipinos began to settle in, and around, New Orleans. Bernardo de Galvez y Madrid, Count of Galvez successfully launched a southern campaign against the British from the city in 1779. Nueva Orleans, the name of New Orleans in Spanish, remained under Spanish control until 1803, when it reverted briefly to French rule. Nearly all of the surviving 18th-century architecture of the Vieux Carré, French Quarter, dates from the Spanish period, notably excepting the old Ursuline convent. Topic: <laughs> United States territory. 
Napoleon sold Louisiana New France to the United States in the Louisiana Purchase in 1803. Thereafter, the city grew rapidly with influxes of Americans, French, Creoles and Africans. Later immigrants were Irish, Germans, Poles and Italians. Major commodity crops of sugar and cotton were cultivated with slave labor on nearby large plantations. Thousands of refugees from the 1804 Haitian Revolution, both whites and free people of color Afrenches or gens de color libres, arrived in New Orleans, often accompanied by slaves of African descent. While Governor Claiborne and other officials wanted to keep out additional free black people, the French Creoles wanted to increase the French-speaking population. As more refugees were allowed into the territory of Orleans, Haitian émigrés who had first gone to Cuba also arrived. Many of the white francophones had been deported by officials in Cuba in retaliation for Bonapartist schemes. Nearly 90% of these immigrants settled in New Orleans. The 1809 migration brought 2,731 whites, 3,102 free persons of African descent, and 3,226 slaves of African descent, doubling the city's population. The city became 63% black, a greater proportion than Charleston, South Carolina's 53%. Topic. Battle of New Orleans During the final campaign of the War of 1812, the British sent a force of 11,000 in an attempt to capture New Orleans. Despite great challenges, General Andrew Jackson, with support from the U.S. Navy, successfully cobbled together a force of militia from Louisiana and Mississippi, including free men of color, U.S. Army regulars, a large contingent of Tennessee state militia, Kentucky riflemen, Choctaw fighters and local privateers the latter led by the pirate Jean Lafitte, to decisively defeat the British troops, led by Sir Edward Pakenham, in the Battle of New Orleans on January 8, 1815. The armies had not learned of the Treaty of Ghent that had been signed on December 24, 1814 however, the treaty did not call for cessation of hostilities until after both governments had ratified it. The U.S. government ratified it on February 16, 1815. The fighting in Louisiana had begun in December 1814 and did not end until late January, after the Americans held off the British Navy during a 10-day siege of Fort St. Philip. The Royal Navy went on to capture Fort Bowyer near Mobile, before the commanders received news of the peace treaty. Topic. Port As a port, New Orleans played a major role during the antebellum era in the Atlantic slave trade. The port handled commodities for export from the interior and imported goods from other countries, which were warehoused and transferred in New Orleans to smaller vessels and distributed along the Mississippi River watershed. The river was filled with steamboats, flatboats and sailing ships. Despite its role in the slave trade, New Orleans at the time had the largest and most prosperous community of free persons of color in the nation, who were often educated, middle-class property owners. Slavery and immigration Dwarfing the other cities in the antebellum south, New Orleans had the nation's largest slave market. The market expanded after the U.S. ended the international trade in 1808. Two-thirds of the more than one million slaves brought to the Deep South arrived via forced migration in the domestic slave trade. The money generated by the sale of slaves in the Upper South has been estimated at 15% of the value of the staple crop economy. The slaves were collectively valued at half a billion dollars. The trade spawned an ancillary economy transportation, housing and clothing, fees, etc., estimated at 13.5% of the price per person, amounting to tens of billions of dollars, $2,005, adjusted for inflation during the antebellum period, with New Orleans as a prime beneficiary, according to historian Paul Lachance. The addition of white immigrants from Saint-Domingue to the white Creole population enabled French speakers to remain a majority of the white population until almost 1830. If a substantial proportion of free persons of color and slaves had not also spoken French, however, the Gallic community would have become a minority of the total population as early as 1820. After the Louisiana Purchase, numerous Anglo-Americans migrated to the city. The population doubled in the 1830s and by 1840, New Orleans had become the nation's wealthiest and the third most populous city. German and Irish immigrants began arriving in the 1840s, working as port laborers. 
In this period, the state legislature passed more restrictions on manumissions of slaves and virtually ended it in 1852. In the 1850s, white Francophones remained an intact and vibrant community. They maintained instruction in French in two of the city's four school districts, all were white. In 1860, the city had 13,000 free people of color, gens de color libres, the class of free, mostly mixed race people that expanded during French and Spanish rule. The census recorded 81% as mulatto, a term used to cover all degrees of mixed race. Mostly part of the Francophone group, they constituted the artisan, educated and professional class of African Americans. Most blacks were still enslaved, working at the port, in domestic service, in crafts, and mostly on the many large, surrounding sugarcane plantations. After growing by 45% in the 1850s, by 1860, the city had nearly 170,000 people. It had grown in wealth, with a per capita income that was second in the nation and the highest in the South. The city had a role as the primary commercial gateway for the nation's booming midsection. The port was the nation's third largest in terms of tonnage of imported goods, after Boston and New York, handling 659,000 tons in 1859. Topic. Civil War As the Creole elite feared, the Civil War changed their world. In 1862, following the occupation by the Navy after the Battle of Forts Jackson and St. Philip, led by Gen. Benjamin F. Butler, a respected state lawyer of the Massachusetts militia, northern forces occupied the city. Later New Orleans residents nicknamed him, Beast Butler, because of a military order he issued. After his troops had been assaulted and harassed in the streets by southern women, his order warned that such future occurrences would result in his men treating such ladies as those plying their avocation in the streets, implying that they would treat the women like prostitutes. Accounts of this spread widely. He also came to be called Spoons Butler because of the alleged looting that his troops did while occupying the city. Butler abolished French language instruction in city schools. Statewide measures in 1864 and, after the war, 1868 further strengthened the English only policy imposed by federal representatives. With the predominance of English speakers, that language had already become dominant in business and government. By the end of the 19th century, French usage had faded. It was also under pressure from Irish, Italian and German immigrants. However, as late as 1902, one-fourth of the population of the city spoke French in ordinary daily intercourse, while another two-fourths was able to understand the language perfectly. And as late as 1945, many elderly Creole women spoke no English. The last major French language newspaper, L'Abbé de la Nouvelle Orléans, New Orleans B, ceased publication on December 27, 1923, after 96 years. According to some sources, Le Courier de la Nouvelle Orleans continued until 1955, as the city was captured and occupied early in the war, it was spared the destruction through warfare suffered by many other cities of the American South. The Union Army eventually extended its control north along the Mississippi River and along the coastal areas. As a result, most of the southern portion of Louisiana was originally exempted from the liberating provisions of the 1863 Emancipation Proclamation issued by President Abraham Lincoln. Large numbers of rural ex-slaves and some free people of color from the city volunteered for the first regiments of black troops in the war. Led by Brigadier General Daniel Ullman 1810-1892, of the 78th Regiment of New York State Volunteers Militia, they were known as the Corps d'Afrique. While that name had been used by a militia before the war, that group was composed of free people of color. The new group was made up mostly of former slaves. They were supplemented in the last two years of the war by newly organized United States colored troops, who played an increasingly important part in the war. Reconstruction Violence throughout the South, especially the Memphis riots of 1866 followed by the New Orleans riot in the same year, led Congress to pass the Reconstruction Act and the Fourteenth Amendment, extending the protections of full citizenship to freedmen and free people of color. Louisiana and Texas were put under the authority of the Fifth Military District. Of the United States during Reconstruction, Louisiana was readmitted to the Union in 1868. 
Its constitution of 1868 granted universal male suffrage and established universal public education. Both blacks and whites were elected to local and state offices. In 1872, Lieutenant Governor P.B.S. Pinchback, who was of mixed race, succeeded Henry Clay Warmouth for a brief period as Republican governor of Louisiana, becoming the first governor of African descent of an American state the next African American to serve as governor of an American state was Douglas Wilder, elected in Virginia in 1989. New Orleans operated a racially integrated public school system during this period. Wartime damage to levees and cities along the Mississippi River adversely affected southern crops and trade. The federal government contributed to restoring infrastructure. The nationwide financial recession and panic of 1873 adversely affected businesses and slowed economic recovery. From 1868, elections in Louisiana were marked by violence, as white insurgents tried to suppress black voting and disrupt Republican Party gatherings. The disputed 1872 gubernatorial election resulted in conflicts that ran for years. The White League an insurgent paramilitary group that supported the Democratic Party, was organized in 1874 and operated in the open, violently suppressing the black vote and running off Republican officeholders. In 1874, in the Battle of Liberty Place, 5,000 members of the White League fought with city police to take over the state offices for the Democratic candidate for governor, holding them for three days. By 1876, such tactics resulted in the white Democrats, the so-called Redeemers, regaining political control of the state legislature. The federal government gave up and withdrew its troops in 1877, ending Reconstruction. <laughs> Jim Crow era White Democrats passed Jim Crow laws, establishing racial segregation in public facilities. In 1889, the legislature passed a constitutional amendment incorporating a grandfather clause that effectively disfranchised freedmen as well as the propertied people of color manumitted before the war. Unable to vote, African Americans could not serve on juries or in local office, and were closed out of formal politics for generations. The South was ruled by a white Democratic Party. Public schools were racially segregated and remained so until 1960. New Orleans' large community of well-educated, often French-speaking free persons of color gens de color libres, who had been free prior to the Civil War, fought against Jim Crow. They organized the Comité des Citoyens Citizens Committee to work for civil rights. As part of their legal campaign, they recruited one of their own, Homer Plessy, to test whether Louisiana's newly enacted Separate Car Act was constitutional. Plessy boarded a commuter train departing New Orleans for Covington, Louisiana, sat in the car reserved for whites only, and was arrested. The case resulting from this incident, Plessy v. Ferguson, was heard by the U.S. Supreme Court in 1896. The court ruled that, separate but equal, accommodations were constitutional, effectively upholding Jim Crow measures. In practice, African American public schools and facilities were underfunded across the South. The Supreme Court ruling contributed to this period as the nadir of race relations in the United States. The rate of lynchings of black men was high across the South, as other states also disfranchised blacks and sought to impose Jim Crow. Nativist prejudices also surfaced. Anti-Italian sentiment in 1891 contributed to the lynchings of 11 Italians, some of whom had been acquitted of the murder of the police chief. Some were shot and killed in the jail where they were detained. It was the largest mass lynching in U.S. history. In July 1900 the city was swept by white mobs rioting after Robert Charles, a young African American, killed a policeman and temporarily escaped. The mob killed him and an estimated 20 other blacks. Seven whites died in the days-long conflict, until a state militia suppressed it. Throughout New Orleans history, until the early 20th century when medical and scientific advances ameliorated the situation, the city suffered repeated epidemics of yellow fever and other tropical and infectious diseases. 20th century New Orleans' economic and population zenith in relation to other American cities occurred in the antebellum period. It was the nation's fifth largest city in 1860 after New York, Philadelphia, Boston and Baltimore and was significantly larger than all other southern cities. 
From the mid-19th century onward rapid economic growth shifted to other areas, while New Orleans' relative importance steadily declined. The growth of railways and highways decreased river traffic, diverting goods to other transportation corridors and markets. Thousands of the most ambitious people of color left the state in the Great Migration around World War II and after, many for West Coast destinations. From the late 1800s, most censuses recorded New Orleans slipping down the ranks in the list of largest American cities New Orleans' population still continued to increase throughout the period, but at a slower rate than before the Civil War. By the mid-20th century, New Orleanians recognized that their city was no longer the leading urban area in the South. By 1950, Houston, Dallas, and Atlanta exceeded New Orleans in size, and in 1960 Miami eclipsed New Orleans, even as the latter's population reached its historic peak. As with other older American cities, highway construction and suburban development drew residents from the center city to newer housing outside. The 1970 census recorded the first absolute decline in population since the city became part of the United States in 1803. The New Orleans metropolitan area continued expanding in population, albeit more slowly than other major Sun Belt cities. While the port remained one of the nation's largest, automation and containerization cost many jobs. The city's former role as banker to the south was supplanted by larger peer cities. New Orleans' economy had always been based more on trade and financial services than on manufacturing, but the city's relatively small manufacturing sector also shrank after World War II. Despite some economic development successes under the administrations of Delesseps, Chep, Morrison (1946–1961) and Victor Vic Shiro (1961–1970), metropolitan New Orleans' growth rate consistently lagged behind more vigorous cities. Topic: <laughs> Civil Rights Movement. During the later years of Morrison's administration, and for the entirety of Shiro's, the city was a center of the civil rights movement. The Southern Christian Leadership Conference was founded in New Orleans, and lunch counter sit-ins were held in Canal Street department stores. A prominent and violent series of confrontations occurred in 1960 when the city attempted school desegregation, following the Supreme Court ruling in Brown v. Board of Education 1954. When six-year-old Ruby Bridges integrated William France Elementary School in the Ninth Ward, she was the first child of color to attend a previously all-white school in the South. The civil rights movement's success in gaining federal passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965 renewed constitutional rights, including voting for blacks. Together, these resulted in the most far-reaching changes in New Orleans' 20th-century history. Though legal and civil equality were re-established by the end of the 1960s, a large gap in income levels and educational attainment persisted between the city's white and African American communities. As the middle class and wealthier members of both races left the center city, its population's income level dropped, and it became proportionately more African American. From 1980, the African American majority elected primarily officials from its own community. They struggled to narrow the gap by creating conditions conducive to the economic uplift of the African American community. New Orleans became increasingly dependent on tourism as an economic mainstay during the administrations of Sidney Barthelemy (1986–1994) and Mark Morial (1994–2002). Relatively low levels of educational attainment, high rates of household poverty, and rising crime threatened the city's prosperity in the later decades of the century. The negative effects of these socioeconomic conditions aligned poorly with the changes in the late 20th century to the economy of the United States, which reflected a post-industrial, knowledge-based paradigm in which mental skills and education were more important to advancement than manual skills. Topic. Drainage and flood control In the 20th century, New Orleans government and business leaders believed they needed to drain and develop outlying areas to provide for the city's expansion. The most ambitious development during this period was a drainage plan devised by engineer and inventor A. Baldwin Wood, designed to break the surrounding swamp's stranglehold on the city's geographic expansion. Until then, urban development in New Orleans was largely limited to higher ground along the natural river levees and bayous. Wood's pump system allowed the city to drain huge tracts of swamp and marshland and expand into low-lying areas. 
Over the 20th century, rapid subsidence, both natural and human-induced, resulted in these newly populated areas subsiding to several feet below sea level. New Orleans was vulnerable to flooding even before the city's footprint departed from the natural high ground near the Mississippi River. In the late 20th century, however, scientists and New Orleans residents gradually became aware of the city's increased vulnerability. In 1965, flooding from Hurricane Betsy killed dozens of residents, although the majority of the city remained dry. The rain-induced flood of May 8, 1995, demonstrated the weakness of the pumping system. After that event, measures were undertaken to dramatically upgrade pumping capacity. By the 1980s and 1990s, scientists observed that extensive, rapid, and ongoing erosion of the marshlands and swamps surrounding New Orleans, especially that related to the Mississippi River, Gulf Outlet Canal, had the unintended result of leaving the city more vulnerable than before to hurricane-induced catastrophic storm surges. 21st century Hurricane Katrina. New Orleans was catastrophically affected by what Raymond B. Seed called, "...the worst engineering disaster in the world since Chernobyl," when the federal levee system failed during Hurricane Katrina in 2005. By the time the hurricane approached the city at the end of August 2005, most residents had evacuated. As the hurricane passed through the Gulf Coast region, the city's federal flood protection system failed, resulting in the worst civil engineering disaster in American history. Floodwalls and levees constructed by the United States Army Corps of Engineers failed below design specifications and 80% of the city flooded. Tens of thousands of residents who had remained were rescued or otherwise made their way to shelters of last resort at the Louisiana Superdome or the New Orleans Morial Convention Center. More than 1,500 people were recorded as having died in Louisiana, most in New Orleans, while others remain unaccounted for. Before Hurricane Katrina, the city called for the first mandatory evacuation in its history, to be followed by another mandatory evacuation three years later with Hurricane Gustav. Topic. Hurricane Rita The city was declared off-limits to residents while efforts to clean up after Hurricane Katrina began. The approach of Hurricane Rita in September 2005 caused repopulation efforts to be postponed, and the Lower Ninth Ward was reflooded by Rita's storm surge. <laughs> Post-disaster recovery Because of the scale of damage, many people resettled permanently outside the area. Federal, state, and local efforts supported recovery and rebuilding in severely damaged neighborhoods. The Census Bureau in July 2006 estimated the population to be 223,000. A subsequent study estimated that 32,000 additional residents had moved to the city as of March 2007, bringing the estimated population to 255,000, approximately 56% of the pre Katrina population level. Another estimate, based on utility usage from July 2007, estimated the population to be approximately 274,000 or 60% of the pre-Katrina population. These estimates are somewhat smaller to a third estimate, based on mail delivery records, from the Greater New Orleans Community Data Center in June 2007, which indicated that the city had regained approximately two-thirds of its pre-Katrina population. In 2008, the Census Bureau revised its population estimate for the city upward, to 336,644. Most recently, by July of 2015, the population was back up to 386,617 to 80% of what it was in 2000. Several major tourist events and other forms of revenue for the city have returned. Large conventions returned. College bowl games returned for the 2006 2007 season. The New Orleans Saints returned that season. The New Orleans Hornets now named the Pelicans returned to the city for the 2007-2008 season. New Orleans hosted the 2008 NBA All-Star Game. Additionally, the city hosted Super Bowl 47. Major annual events such as Mardi Gras, Voodoo Experience, and the Jazz and Heritage Festival were never displaced or cancelled. A new annual festival, the Running of the Bulls New Orleans, was created in 2007. On February 7, 2017, a large EF3 wedge tornado hit parts of the eastern side of the city, damaging homes and other buildings, as well as destroying a mobile home park. 
At least 25 people were left injured by the event. Topic geography New Orleans is located in the Mississippi River Delta, south of Lake Panchartrain, on the banks of the Mississippi River, approximately 105 miles 169 kilometers upriver from the Gulf of Mexico. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, the city's area is 350 square miles 910 square kilometers, of which 169 square miles 440 square kilometers is land and 181 square miles 470 square kilometers 52% is water. Orleans Parish is the smallest parish by land area in Louisiana. The area along the river is characterized by ridges and hollows. Topic elevation New Orleans was originally settled on the river's natural levees or high ground. After the Flood Control Act of 1965, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers built floodwalls and man-made levees around a much larger geographic footprint that included previous marshland and swamp. Over time, pumping of water from marshland allowed for development into lower elevation areas. Today, a large portion of the city is at or below local mean sea level. Evidence suggests that portions of the city may be dropping in elevation due to subsidence being that the motion of the Earth's surface is shifting downwards relative to sea level. A 2007 study by Tulane and Xavier University suggested that 51% of the contiguous urbanized portions of Orleans, Jefferson, and St. Bernard parishes lie at or above sea level, with the more densely populated areas generally on higher ground. The average elevation of the city is currently between 1 foot .30 meters and 2 feet .61 meters below sea level, with some portions of the city as high as 20 feet 6 meters at the base of the river levee in Uptown and others as low as 7 feet 2 meters below sea level in the farthest reaches of eastern New Orleans. A study published by the ASCE Journal of Hydrologic Engineering in 2016, however, stated, most of New Orleans proper, about 65% is at or below mean sea level, as defined by the average elevation of Lake Panchartrain. The magnitude of subsidence potentially caused by the draining of natural marsh in the New Orleans area and southeast Louisiana is a topic of debate. A study published in Geology in 2006 by an associate professor at Tulane University claims, while erosion and wetland loss are huge problems along Louisiana's coast, the basement 30 feet (9.1 meters) to 50 feet (15 meters) beneath much of the Mississippi Delta has been highly stable for the past 8,000 years with negligible subsidence rates. The study noted, however, that the results did not necessarily apply to the Mississippi River Delta nor the New Orleans metropolitan area proper. On the other hand, a report by the American Society of Civil Engineers claims that. New Orleans is subsiding sinking. Large portions of Orleans, St. Bernard, and Jefferson parishes are currently below sea level and continue to sink. New Orleans is built on thousands of feet of soft sand, silt, and clay. Subsidence or settling of the ground surface occurs naturally due to the consolidation and oxidation of organic soils called marsh in New Orleans and local groundwater pumping. In the past, flooding and deposition of sediments from the Mississippi River counterbalanced the natural subsidence, leaving southeast Louisiana at or above sea level. However, due to major flood control structures being built upstream on the Mississippi River and levees being built around New Orleans, fresh layers of sediment are not replenishing the ground lost by subsidence. In May 2016, NASA published a study which suggested that most areas were, in fact, experiencing subsidence at a highly variable rate, which was generally consistent with, but somewhat higher than, previous studies. <inaudible> Cityscape The Central Business District is located immediately north and west of the Mississippi and was historically called the American Quarter, or American Sector. It was developed after the heart of French and Spanish settlement. It includes Lafayette Square. Most streets in this area fan out from a central point. Major streets include Canal Street, Poydras Street, Tulane Avenue and Loyola Avenue. Canal Street divides the traditional downtown area from the uptown area. Every street crossing Canal Street between the Mississippi River and Rampart Street, which is the northern edge of the French Quarter, has a different name for the uptown and downtown portions. 
For example, St. Charles Avenue, known for its streetcar line, is called Royal Street below Canal Street, though where it traverses the central business district between Canal and Lee Circle, it is properly called St. Charles Street. Elsewhere in the city, Canal Street serves as the dividing point between the South and North portions of various streets. In the local parlance downtown means downriver from Canal Street, while uptown means upriver from Canal Street. Downtown neighborhoods include the French Quarter, Treme, the Seventh Ward, Faubourg Marigny, Bywater, the Upper Ninth Ward, and the Lower Ninth Ward. Uptown neighborhoods include the Warehouse District, the Lower Garden District, the Garden District, the Irish Channel, the University District, Carrollton, Girt Town, Fontainebleau, and Broadmoor. However, the Warehouse and the Central Business District are frequently called downtown as a specific region, as in the Downtown Development District. Other major districts within the city include Bayou St. John, Mid City, Gentilly, Lakeview, Lakefront, New Orleans East, and Algiers. Topic. Historic and residential architecture New Orleans is world famous for its abundance of architectural styles that reflect the city's multicultural heritage. Though New Orleans possesses numerous structures of national architectural significance, it is equally, if not more, revered for its enormous, largely intact even post historic built environment. Twenty National Register Historic Districts have been established, and 14 local historic districts aid in preservation. Thirteen of the districts are administered by the New Orleans Historic District Landmarks Commission HDLC, while one—the French Quarter—is administered by the Vieux Carré Commission VCC. Additionally, both the National Park Service, via the National Register of Historic Places, and the HDLC have landmarked individual buildings, many of which lie outside the boundaries of existing historic districts. Housing styles include the shotgun house and the bungalow style. Creole cottages and townhouses, notable for their large courtyards and intricate iron balconies, line the streets of the French Quarter. American townhouses, double gallery houses, and raised center hall cottages are notable. St. Charles Avenue is famed for its large antebellum homes. Its mansions are in various styles, such as Greek Revival, American Colonial and the Victorian styles of Queen Anne and Italianate architecture. New Orleans is also noted for its large, European-style Catholic cemeteries. Topic. Tallest buildings For much of its history, New Orleans' skyline displayed only low- and mid-rise structures. The soft soils are susceptible to subsidence, and there was doubt about the feasibility of constructing high rises. Developments in engineering throughout the 20th century eventually made it possible to build sturdy foundations to underlie high rises. In the 1960s, the World Trade Center New Orleans and Plaza Tower demonstrated skyscrapers' viability. One Shell Square became the city's tallest building in 1972. The oil boom of the 1970s and early 1980s redefined New Orleans skyline with the development of the Poydras Street Corridor. Most are clustered along Canal Street and Poydras Street in the Central Business District. Topic. Climate The climate is humid subtropical Köppen climate classification CFA, with short, generally mild winters and hot, humid summers. Most suburbs and parts of wards 9 and 15 fall in USDA plant hardiness zone 9A, while the city's other 15 wards are rated 9B in whole. The monthly daily average temperature ranges from 53.4 degrees Fahrenheit (11.9 degrees Celsius) in January to 83.3 degrees Fahrenheit (28.5 degrees Celsius) in July and August. Officially, as measured at New Orleans International Airport, temperature records range from 11 to 102 degrees Fahrenheit (-12 to 39 degrees Celsius) on December 23, 1989, and August 22, 1980, respectively. Audubon Park has recorded temperatures ranging from 6 degrees Fahrenheit (-14 degrees Celsius) on February 13, 1899, up to 104 degrees Fahrenheit (40 degrees Celsius) on June 24, 2009. Dew points in the summer months June -August are relatively high, ranging from 71.1 to 73.4 degrees Fahrenheit 21.7 to 23.0 degrees Celsius. 
The average precipitation is 62.5 inches mm annually, the summer months are the wettest, while October is the driest month. Precipitation in winter usually accompanies the passing of a cold front. On average, there are 77 days of 90 degrees Fahrenheit degrees Celsius plus highs, 8.1 days per winter where the high does not exceed 50 degrees Fahrenheit 10 degrees Celsius, and 8.0 nights with freezing lows annually. It is rare for the temperature to reach 20 or 100 degrees Fahrenheit minus 7 or 38 degrees Celsius, with the last occurrence of each being February 5, 1996 and June 26, 2016, respectively. New Orleans experiences snowfall only on rare occasions. A small amount of snow fell during the 2004 Christmas Eve snowstorm and again on Christmas December 25 when a combination of rain, sleet, and snow fell on the city, leaving some bridges icy. The New Year's Eve 1963 snowstorm affected New Orleans and brought 4.5 inches 11 centimeters. Snow fell again on December 22, 1989, when most of the city received 1 to 2 inches 2.5 to 5.1 centimeters. The last significant snowfall in New Orleans was on the morning of December 11, 2008. Topic: <laughs> Threat from tropical cyclones. Hurricanes pose a severe threat to the area, and the city is particularly at risk because of its low elevation, because it is surrounded by water from the north, east, and south and because of Louisiana's sinking coast. According to the Federal Emergency Management Agency, New Orleans is the nation's most vulnerable city to hurricanes. Indeed, portions of Greater New Orleans have been flooded by the Grand Isle Hurricane of 1909, the New Orleans Hurricane of 1915, 1947 Fort Lauderdale Hurricane, Hurricane Flossie in 1956, Hurricane Betsy in 1965, Hurricane George in 1998, Hurricanes Katrina and Rita in 2005, and Hurricane Gustav in 2008, with the flooding in Betsy being significant and in a few neighborhoods severe, and that in Katrina being disastrous in the majority of the city. In 2005, storm surge from Hurricane Katrina caused catastrophic failure of the federally designed and built levees, flooding 80% of the city. A report by the American Society of Civil Engineers says that, "...had the levees and floodwalls not failed and had the pump stations operated, nearly two-thirds of the deaths would not have occurred." New Orleans has always had to consider the risk of hurricanes, but the risks are dramatically greater today due to coastal erosion from human interference. Since the beginning of the 20th century, it has been estimated that Louisiana has lost 2,000 square miles 5, square kilometers of coast including many of its barrier islands, which once protected New Orleans against storm surge. Following Hurricane Katrina, the Army Corps of Engineers has instituted massive levee repair and hurricane protection measures to protect the city. In 2006, Louisiana voters overwhelmingly adopted an amendment to the state's constitution to dedicate all revenues from offshore drilling to restore Louisiana's eroding coastline. Congress has allocated $7 billion to bolster New Orleans flood protection. According to a study by the National Academy of Engineering and the National Research Council, levees and floodwalls surrounding New Orleans no matter how large or sturdy, cannot provide absolute protection against overtopping or failure in extreme events. Levees and floodwalls should be viewed as a way to reduce risks from hurricanes and storm surges, not as measures that completely eliminate risk. For structures in hazardous areas and residents who do not relocate, the committee recommended major floodproofing measures, such as elevating the first floor of buildings to at least the 100-year flood level. Demographics According to the 2010 census, 343,829 people and 189,896 households lived in New Orleans. Its racial and ethnic makeup was 60.2% African American, 33.0% White, 2.9% Asian, 1.7% Vietnamese, 0.3% Indian, 0.3% Chinese, 0.1% Filipino, 0.1% Korean, 0.0% Pacific Islander, and 1.7% were people of two or more races. People of Hispanic or Latino origin made up 5.3% of the population, 1.3% is Mexican, 1.3% Honduran, 0.4% Cuban, 0.3% Puerto Rican, and 0.3% Nicaraguan. 
The last population estimate before Hurricane Katrina was 454,865, as of July 1, 2005. A population analysis released in August 2007 estimated the population to be 273,000, 60% of the pre-Katrina population and an increase of about 50,000 since July 2006. A September 2007 report by the Greater New Orleans Community Data Center, which tracks population based on U.S. Postal Service figures, found that in August 2007, just over 137,000 households received mail. That compares with about 198,000 households in July 2005, representing about 70% of pre-Katrina population. More recently, the Census Bureau revised upward its 2008 population estimate for the city, to 336,644 inhabitants. In 2010, estimates showed that neighborhoods that did not flood were near or even greater than 100% of their pre Katrina populations. A 2006 study by researchers at Tulane University and the University of California, Berkeley determined that as many as 10,000 to 14,000 undocumented immigrants, many from Mexico, resided in New Orleans. Janet Merguia, president and chief executive officer of the National Council of La Raza, stated that up to 120,000 Hispanic workers lived in New Orleans. In June 2007, one study stated that the Hispanic population had risen from 15,000, pre Katrina, to over 50,000. As of 2010, 90.31% of residents age 5 and older spoke English at home as a primary language, while 4.84% spoke Spanish, 1.87% Vietnamese, and 1.05% spoke French. In total, 9.69% population age 5 and older spoke a mother language other than English. Topic. Religion New Orleans' colonial history of French and Spanish settlement generated a strong Roman Catholic tradition. Catholic missions ministered to slaves and free people of color and established schools for them. In addition, many late 19th and early 20th century European immigrants, such as the Irish, some Germans, and Italians were Catholic. Within the archdiocese, which includes not only the city but the surrounding parishes as well, 35.9% of the population is Roman Catholic. Catholicism is reflected in French and Spanish cultural traditions, including its many parochial schools, street names, architecture and festivals, including Mardi Gras. New Orleans displays a distinctive variety of Louisiana voodoo, due in part to syncretism with African and Afro-Caribbean Roman Catholic beliefs. The fame of voodoo practitioner Marie Laveau contributed to this, as did New Orleans' Caribbean cultural influences. Although the tourism industry strongly associated voodoo with the city, only a small number of people are serious adherents. Jewish settlers, primarily Sephardim, settled in New Orleans from the early 19th century. Some migrated from the communities established in the colonial years in Charleston, South Carolina and Savannah, Georgia. The merchant Abraham Cohen Labatt helped found the first Jewish congregation in New Orleans in the 1830s, which became known as the Portuguese Jewish Nefutso Yehuda Congregation. He and some other members were Sephardic Jews, whose ancestors had lived in Portugal and Spain. Ashkenazi Jews from Eastern Europe immigrated in the late 19th and 20th centuries. By the 21st century, 10,000 Jews lived in New Orleans. This number dropped to 7,000 after Hurricane Katrina, but rose again after efforts to incentivize the community's growth resulted in the arrival of about an additional 2,000 Jews. New Orleans synagogues lost members, but most reopened in their original locations. The exception was Congregation Beth Israel, the oldest and most prominent Orthodox synagogue in the New Orleans region. Beth Israel's building in Lakeview was destroyed by flooding. After seven years of holding services in temporary quarters, the congregation consecrated a new synagogue on land purchased from the Reform Congregation Gates of Prayer in Metairie. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Ethnic groups. The earliest Filipino Americans to live within the city arrived in the early 1800s. As of 2011, the Hispanic population had grown in the New Orleans area, including in Kenner, Central Metairie, and Terrytown in Jefferson Parish and eastern New Orleans and Mid City in New Orleans proper. After Katrina, the small Brazilian American population expanded. 
Portuguese speakers were the second most numerous group to take English as a second language classes in the Roman Catholic Archdiocese, after Spanish speakers. Many Brazilians worked in skilled trades such as tile and flooring, although fewer worked as day laborers than did Latinos. Many had moved from Brazilian communities in the northeastern United States, Florida and Georgia. Brazilians settled throughout the metropolitan area. Most were undocumented. In January 2008 the New Orleans Brazilian population had a mid-range estimate of 3,000. By 2008 Brazilians had opened many small churches, shops and restaurants catering to their community. Topic. Changes in population Beginning in 1960, the population decreased due to factors such as the cycles of oil production and tourism, and as suburbanization increased as with many cities, and jobs migrated to surrounding parishes. This economic and population decline resulted in high levels of poverty in the city. In 1960, it had the fifth highest poverty rate of all U.S. cities, and was almost twice the national average in 2005, at 24.5%. New Orleans experienced an increase in residential segregation from 1900 to 1980, leaving the disproportionately African-American poor in older, low-lying locations. These areas were especially susceptible to flood and storm damage. Katrina displaced 800,000 people, contributing significantly to the decline. African-Americans, renters, the elderly, and people with low income were disproportionately affected by Katrina, compared to affluent and white residents. In Katrina's aftermath, city government commissioned groups such as Bring New Orleans Back Commission, the New Orleans Neighborhood Rebuilding Plan, the Unified New Orleans Plan, and the Office of Recovery Management to contribute to plans addressing depopulation. Their ideas included shrinking the city's footprint from before the storm, incorporating community voices into development plans, and creating green spaces, some of which incited controversy. From 2010 to 2014, the city grew by 12%, adding an average of more than 10,000 new residents each year following the 2010 census. Topic: <laughs> Economy. New Orleans operates one of the world's largest and busiest ports and metropolitan New Orleans is a center of maritime industry. The region accounts for a significant portion of the nation's oil refining and petrochemical production, and serves as a white-collar corporate base for onshore and offshore petroleum and natural gas production. New Orleans is also a center for higher learning, with over 50,000 students enrolled in the region's 11 two- and four-year degree-granting institutions. Tulane University, a top 50 research university, is located in Uptown. Metropolitan New Orleans is a major regional hub for the health care industry and boasts a small, globally competitive manufacturing sector. The center city possesses a rapidly growing, entrepreneurial creative industries sector and is renowned for its cultural tourism. Greater New Orleans, Inc. GNO, Inc. acts as the first point of contact for regional economic development, coordinating between Louisiana's Department of Economic Development and the various business development agencies. Topic Port New Orleans began as a strategically located trading entrepot and it remains, above all, a crucial transportation hub and distribution center for waterborne commerce. The Port of New Orleans is the fifth largest in the United States based on cargo volume, and second largest in the state after the Port of South Louisiana. It is the twelfth largest in the U.S. based on cargo value. The Port of South Louisiana, also located in the New Orleans area, is the world's busiest in terms of bulk tonnage. When combined with Port of New Orleans, it forms the fourth largest port system in volume. Many shipbuilding, shipping, logistics, freight forwarding and commodity brokerage firms either are based in metropolitan New Orleans or maintain a local presence. Examples include Intermarine, Biso Towboat, Northrop Grumman Ship Systems, Trinity Yachts, Expeditors International, Bollinger Shipyards, IMTT, International Coffee Corp., Basso America, Transoceanic Shipping, Transportation Consultants Inc., Depay Storage and Forwarding and Silocaf. The largest coffee roasting plant in the world, operated by Folgers, is located in New Orleans East. New Orleans is located near to the Gulf of Mexico and its many oil rigs. Louisiana ranks fifth among states in oil production and eighth in reserves. It has two of the four Strategic Petroleum Reserve SPR storage facilities, West Hackberry in Cameron Parish and Bayou Choctaw in Iberville Parish. 
The area hosts 17 petroleum refineries, with a combined crude oil distillation capacity of nearly 2.8 million barrels per day 450,000 cubic meters, d, the second highest after Texas. Louisiana's numerous ports include the Louisiana Offshore Oil Port Loop, which is capable of receiving the largest oil tankers. Given the quantity of oil imports, Louisiana is home to many major pipelines, crude oil Exxon, Chevron, BP, Texaco, Shell, Skirlock Permian, Mid Valley, Calumet, Conoco, Coke Industries, Unical, U.S. Department of Energy, Locap, Product Tepco Partners, Colonial, Plantation, Explorer, Texaco, Collins, and Liquefied Petroleum Gas Dixie, Tepco, Black Lake, Coke, Chevron, Dynagy, Kinder Morgan Energy Partners, Dow Chemical Company, Bridge Line, FMP, Tejas, Texaco, UTP. Several energy companies have regional headquarters in the area, including Royal Dutch Shell, ENI and Chevron. Other energy producers and oilfield services companies are headquartered in the city or region, and the sector supports a large professional services base of specialized engineering and design firms, as well as a term office for the federal government's Minerals Management Service. Topic business The city is the home to a single Fortune 500 company, Entergy, a power generation utility and nuclear power plant operations specialist. After Katrina, the city lost its other Fortune 500 company, Freeport McMoran, when it merged its copper and gold exploration unit with an Arizona company and relocated that division to Phoenix. Its McMoran Exploration affiliate remains headquartered in New Orleans. Companies with significant operations or headquarters in New Orleans include, Pan American Life Insurance, Pool Corp., Rolls-Royce, New Park Resources, AT&T, TurboSquid, Isiots, IBM, Navtech, Superior Energy Services, Textron Marine and Land Systems, McDermott International, Pellerin Milner, Lockheed Martin, Imperial Trading, Latrum, Haraz Entertainment, Stewart Enterprises, Edison Choist Offshore, Zatarans, Waldemar S. Nelson & Co., Whitney National Bank, Capital one, Tidewater Marine, Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, Parsons Brinkerhoff, MWH Global, CH2M Hill, Energy Partners Limited, The Receivables Exchange, GE Capital and Smoothie King. Topic tourist and convention business tourism is a staple of the city's economy. Perhaps more visible than any other sector, New Orleans' tourist and convention industry is a $5.5 billion industry that accounts for 40% of city tax revenues. In 2004, the hospitality industry employed 85,000 people, making it the city's top economic sector as measured by employment. New Orleans also hosts the World Cultural Economic Forum WCEF. The forum, held annually at the New Orleans Morial Convention Center, is directed toward promoting cultural and economic development opportunities through the strategic convening of cultural ambassadors and leaders from around the world. The first WCEF took place in October 2008. Topic Other federal agencies and the armed forces operate significant facilities there. The U.S. Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals operates at the U.S. Courthouse downtown. NASA's Mashad Rocket Factory is located in New Orleans East and is operated by Lockheed Martin. It is a huge manufacturing facility that produced the external fuel tanks for the space shuttles and is now used for the construction of NASA's space launch system. The Rocket Factory lies within the enormous New Orleans Regional Business Park, also home to the National Finance Center, operated by the United States Department of Agriculture USDA, and the Crescent Crown Distribution Center. Other large governmental installations include the U.S. Navy's Space and Naval Warfare SPAWAR Systems Command, located within the University of New Orleans Research and Technology Park in Gentilly, Naval Air Station Joint Reserve Base New Orleans, and the headquarters for the Marine Force Reserves in Federal City in Algiers. Topic culture and contemporary life Topic Tourism New Orleans has many visitor attractions, from the world-renowned French Quarter to St. Charles Avenue, home of Tulane and Loyola Universities, the historic Panchartrain Hotel and many 19th-century mansions, to Magazine Street with its boutique stores and antique shops. According to current travel guides, New Orleans is one of the top 10 most visited cities in the United States. 10.1 million visitors came to New Orleans in 2004. Prior to Katrina, 265 hotels with 38,338 rooms operated in the Greater New Orleans area. 
in May 2007, that had declined to some 140 hotels and motels with over 31,000 rooms. A 2009 Travel Plus Leisure poll of America's Favorite Cities ranked New Orleans first in 10 categories, the most first place rankings of the 30 cities included. According to the poll, New Orleans was the best U.S. City as a spring break destination and for wild weekends, stylish boutique hotels, cocktail hours, singles per bar scenes, live music, concerts and bands, antique and vintage shops, cafes, coffee bars, neighborhood restaurants, and people watching. The city ranked second for friendliness behind Charleston, South Carolina, gay friendliness behind San Francisco, bed and breakfast hotels, inns, and ethnic food. However, the city placed near the bottom in cleanliness, safety and as a family destination, the French Quarter known locally as the Quarter or Vieux Carré, which was the colonial era city and is bounded by the Mississippi River, Rampart Street, Canal Street, and Esplanade Avenue, contains popular hotels, bars and nightclubs. Notable tourist attractions in the quarter include Bourbon Street, Jackson Square, St. Louis Cathedral, the French Market including Café du Monde, famous for Café au lait and beignets and Preservation Hall. Also in the French Quarter is the Old New Orleans Mint, a former branch of the United States Mint which now operates as a museum, and the historic New Orleans Collection, a museum and research center housing art and artifacts relating to the history and the Gulf South. Close to the quarter is the Treme community, which contains the New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park and the New Orleans African American Museum, a site which is listed on the Louisiana African American Heritage Trail. The Natchez is an authentic steamboat with a calliope that cruises the length of the city twice daily. Unlike most other places in the United States, New Orleans has become widely known for its elegant decay. The city's historic cemeteries and their distinct above ground tombs are attractions in themselves, the oldest and most famous of which, St. Louis Cemetery, greatly resembles Père Lachaise Cemetery in Paris. The National World War II Museum offers a multi building odyssey through the history of the Pacific and European theaters. Nearby, Confederate Memorial Hall, the oldest continually operating museum in Louisiana, although under renovation since Katrina, contains the second largest collection of Confederate memorabilia. Art museums include the Contemporary Arts Center, the New Orleans Museum of Art NOMA in City Park, and the Ogden Museum of Southern Art. New Orleans is home to the Audubon Nature Institute which consists of Audubon Park, the Audubon Zoo, the Aquarium of the Americas and the Audubon Insectarium, and home to gardens which include Long View House and Gardens and the New Orleans Botanical Garden. City Park, one of the country's most expansive and visited urban parks, has one of the largest stands of oak trees in the world. Other points of interest can be found in the surrounding areas. Many wetlands are found nearby, including Honey Island Swamp and Barataria Preserve. Chalmette Battlefield and National Cemetery, located just south of the city, is the site of the 1815 Battle of New Orleans. In 2009, New Orleans ranked number 7 on Newsmax magazine's list of the top 25 most uniquely American cities and towns. The piece cited the city's post-Katrina rebuilding effort as well as its efforts to become eco-friendly. Entertainment and performing arts The New Orleans area is home to numerous annual celebrations. The most well-known is Carnival, or Mardi Gras. Carnival officially begins on the Feast of the Epiphany, also known as the Twelfth Night. Mardi Gras French for Fat Tuesday, the final and grandest day of festivities, is the last Tuesday before the Catholic liturgical season of Lent, which commences on Ash Wednesday. The largest of the city's many music festivals is the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. Commonly referred to simply as Jazz Fest, it is one of the nation's largest music festivals. The festival features a variety of music, including both native Louisiana and international artists. Along with Jazz Fest, New Orleans Voodoo Experience Voodoo Fest and the Essence Music Festival are other festivals featuring local and international artists. Other major festivals include Southern Decadence, the French Quarter Festival and the Tennessee Williams, New Orleans Literary Festival. In 2002, Louisiana began offering tax incentives for film and television production. This led to a substantial increase in activity and brought the nickname Hollywood South. Films produced in and around New Orleans include Ray, Runaway Jury, The Pelican Brief, Glory Road, All the King's Men, Deja Vu, Last Holiday, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button and Twelve Years a Slave. 
In 2006, work began on the Louisiana Film and Television Studio Complex, based in Treme. Louisiana began to offer similar tax incentives for music and theater productions in 2007, leading many to begin referring to New Orleans as Broadway South. The first theater in New Orleans was the French language Theater de la Rue Saint Pierre, which opened in 1792. The first opera in New Orleans was performed there in 1796. In the 19th century the city was the home of two of America's most important venues for French opera, the Théâtre d'Orléans and later the French Opera House. Today, opera is performed by the New Orleans Opera. New Orleans has long been a significant center for music, showcasing its intertwined European, Latin American and African cultures. The city's unique musical heritage was born in its colonial and early American days from a unique blending of European musical instruments with African rhythms. As the only North American city to have allowed slaves to gather in public and play their native music largely in Congo Square, now located within Louis Armstrong Park, New Orleans gave birth to an epical indigenous music, jazz. Soon, brass bands formed, beginning a century-long tradition. The Louis Armstrong Park area, near the French Quarter in Treme, contains the New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park. The city's music was later significantly influenced by Acadiana, home of Cajun and Zydeco music, and by Delta Blues. New Orleans' unique musical culture is on display in its traditional funerals. A spin on military funerals, New Orleans' traditional funerals feature sad music mostly dirges and hymns on the way to the cemetery and happier music hot jazz on the way back. Until the 1990s, most locals preferred to call these funerals with music, but visitors to the city have long dubbed them jazz funerals. Much later in its musical development, New Orleans was home to a distinctive brand of rhythm and blues that contributed greatly to the growth of rock and roll. An example of the New Orleans sound in the 1960s is the number one U.S. hit Chapel of Love by the Dixie Cups, a song which knocked the Beatles out of the top spot on the Billboard Hot 100. New Orleans became a hotbed for funk music in the 1960s and 1970s, and by the late 1980s, it had developed its own localized variant of hip-hop, called bounce music. While not commercially successful outside of the Deep South, it remained immensely popular in poorer neighborhoods throughout the 1990s. A cousin of Bounce, New Orleans hip-hop achieved commercial success locally and internationally, producing Lil Wayne, Master P, Birdman, Juvenile, Cash Money Records and No Limit Records. Additionally, the popularity of cowpunk, a fast form of southern rock, originated with the help of several local bands, such as The Radiators, Better Than Ezra, Cowboy Mouth and Dash Rip Rock. Throughout the 1990s, many sludge metal bands started. New Orleans heavy metal bands like I Hate God, Soylent Green, Crowbar, and Down incorporated styles such as hardcore punk, doom metal and southern rock to create an original and heady brew of swampy and aggravated metal that has largely avoided standardization. New Orleans is the southern terminus of the famed Highway 61 made musically famous by Bob Dylan. Topic. Food New Orleans is world famous for its food. The indigenous cuisine is distinctive and influential. New Orleans food combined local creole, oat creole and New Orleans French cuisines. Local ingredients, French, Spanish, Italian, African, Native American, Cajun, Chinese, and a hint of Cuban traditions combined to produce a truly unique and easily recognizable New Orleans flavor. New Orleans is known for specialties including beignets locally pronounced like beignets. Square-shaped fried dough that could be called French donuts, served with café au lait made with a blend of coffee and chicory rather than only coffee, and Pope boy and Italian mifoletta sandwiches, gulf oysters on the half shell, fried oysters, boiled crawfish and other seafood, étouffée, jambalaya, gumbo and other creole dishes, and the Monday favorite of red beans and rice Louis Armstrong often signed his letters, red beans and ricely yours. Another New Orleans specialty is the praline locally, a candy made with brown sugar, granulated sugar, cream, butter, and pecans. The city offers notable street food including the Asian-inspired beef yaka mine. Topic. Dialect New Orleans developed a distinctive local dialect that is neither Cajun nor the stereotypical southern accent that is often misportrayed by film and television actors. Like earlier Southern Englishes, feature frequent deletion of the pre-consonantal R. 
This dialect is quite similar to New York City area accents such as Brooklynese to people unfamiliar with either. No consensus describes how it came to be, but it likely resulted from New Orleans' geographic isolation by water and the fact that the city was a major immigration port throughout the 19th century. As a result, many of the ethnic groups who reside in Brooklyn also reside in New Orleans, such as the Irish, Italians, especially Sicilians, Germans, and a Jewish community. One of the strongest varieties of the New Orleans accent is sometimes identified as the Yacht dialect, from the greeting, Where Yacht? This distinctive accent is dying out in the city, but remains strong in the surrounding parishes. Less visibly, various ethnic groups throughout the area have retained distinct language traditions. Although rare, languages still spoken include Cajun, the Creole Louisian spoken by the Creoles and an archaic Louisiana Canarian Spanish dialect spoken by the Ilaño people and older members of the population. Sports. New Orleans professional sports teams include the 2009 Super Bowl 44 champion New Orleans Saints NFL, the New Orleans Pelicans NBA, and the New Orleans Baby Cakes PCL. It is also home to the Big Easy Roller Girls, an all-female flat-track roller derby team, and the New Orleans Blaze, a women's football team. New Orleans is also home to two NCAA Division I athletic programs, the Tulane Green Wave of the American Athletic Conference and the UNO Privateers of the Southland Conference. The Mercedes-Benz Superdome is the home of the Saints, the Sugar Bowl, and other prominent events. It has hosted the Super Bowl a record seven times 1978, 1981, 1986, 1990, 1997, 2002, and 2013. The Smoothie King Center is the home of the Pelicans, Voodoo, and many events that are not large enough to need the Superdome. New Orleans is also home to the Fairgrounds Race Course, the nation's third oldest thoroughbred track. The city's lakefront arena has also been home to sporting events. Each year New Orleans plays host to the Sugar Bowl, the New Orleans Bowl and the Zurich Classic, a golf tournament on the PGA Tour. In addition, it has often hosted major sporting events that have no permanent home, such as the Super Bowl, Arena Bowl, NBA All-Star Game, BCS National Championship Game, and the NCAA Final Four. The Rock and Roll Mardi Gras Marathon and the Crescent City Classic are two annual road running events. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> National Protected Areas. Bayou Sauvage National Wildlife Refuge Jean Lafitte National Historical Park and Preserve Part. New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park Government The city is a political subdivision of the state of Louisiana. It has a mayor-council government, following a home rule charter adopted in 1954, as later amended. The city council consists of seven members, who are elected by district and two at-large council members. The mayor as of 2017 was Mitch Landrieu. The Orleans Parish Civil Sheriff's Office serves papers involving lawsuits and provides security for the civil district court and juvenile courts. The criminal sheriff, Marlon Gusman, maintains the parish prison system, provides security for the criminal district court, and provides backup for the New Orleans Police Department on an as-needed basis. An ordinance in 2006 established an Office of Inspector General to review city government activities. The city and the parish of Orleans operate as a merged city parish government. The original city was composed of what are now the 1st through 9th wards. The city of Lafayette including the Garden District was added in 1852 as the 10th and 11th wards. In 1870, Jefferson City, including Faubourg Bouligny and much of the Audubon and University areas, was annexed as the 12th, 13th, and 14th wards. Algiers, on the west bank of the Mississippi, was also annexed in 1870, becoming the 15th ward. New Orleans government is largely centralized in the city council and mayor's office, but it maintains earlier systems from when various sections of the city managed their affairs separately. For example, New Orleans had seven elected tax assessors, each with their own staff, representing various districts of the city, rather than one centralized office. A constitutional amendment passed on November 7, 2006 consolidated the seven assessors into one in 2010. 
The New Orleans government operates both a fire department and the New Orleans Emergency Medical Services. Crime Murder capital Crime is an ongoing problem. As in comparable U.S. cities, the incidence of homicide and other violent crimes is highly concentrated in certain impoverished neighborhoods. The murder rate for the city has been historically high and consistently among the highest rates nationwide. From 1994 to 2013 New Orleans was the nation's murder capital averaging over 250-plus murders yearly. The first record was broken in 1979 when the city reached to 242 homicides. The record would be broken again reaching 250 by 1989 to 345 by the end of 1991. By 1993 New Orleans had 395 murder 79.5 for every 100,000 residents. 1994 was the year the city was officially named the murder capital of America hitting a historic peak at 424. The murder count surpassed Gary, Indiana, Washington, D.C., Chicago, Baltimore and Miami. In 2003 New Orleans' homicide rate was nearly eight times the national average and had the highest per capita city murder rate of any city in the United States with 274 homicides up from the previous year. According to the local officials, New Orleans retained its status as the nation's murder capital for the second time since 1994. In 2006, with nearly half of the population gone from Hurricane Katrina, the city hit another record of homicide, making it the most dangerous city in the country. By 2009, despite a 17% decrease in violent crime, the homicide rate remained among the highest in the United States, at between 55 and 64 per 100,000 residents. In 2010, New Orleans' homicide rate was 49.1 per 100,000, and in 2012, that number climbed to 53.2. This was the highest rate among cities of 250,000 population or larger. Offenders in New Orleans are almost exclusively black males, 97% were black and 95% were male. The violent crime rate was a key issue in the 2010 mayoral race. In January 2007, several thousand New Orleans residents marched to City Hall for a rally demanding police and city leaders tackle the crime problem. Then Mayor Ray Nagan said he was totally and solely focused on addressing the problem. Later, the city implemented checkpoints during late night hours in problem areas. The murder rate climbed 14% in 2011 to 57.88 per 100,000 rising to number 21 in the world. In 2016, according to annual crime statistics released by the New Orleans Police Department, 176 were murdered. In 2017, New Orleans had the highest rate of gun violence surpassing the larger populated Chicago and Detroit. Education Colleges and universities New Orleans has the highest concentration of colleges and universities in Louisiana. Colleges and universities based within the city Tulane University, a private, major research university founded in 1834. Loyola University New Orleans, a Jesuit university founded in 1912. University of New Orleans, a public, urban research university. Xavier University of Louisiana, the only historically black Catholic university in the United States. Southern University at New Orleans, a public, historically black university in the Southern University system. Dillard University, a private, historically black liberal arts college founded in 1869. Louisiana State University Health Sciences Center. University of Holy Cross, a Catholic liberal arts college founded in 1916. Notre Dame Seminary New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary Delgado Community College, founded in 1921. William Carey College School of Nursing Herzing College New Orleans Culinary Institute Topic. Primary and secondary schools New Orleans Public Schools NOPS, is the city's public school system. Katrina was a watershed moment for the school system. 
Pre-Katrina, Knops was one of the area's largest systems along with the Jefferson Parish Public School System. It was also the lowest performing school district in Louisiana. According to researchers Carl L. Bankston and Stephen J. Caldas, only 12 of the 103 public schools within the city limits showed reasonably good performance. Following Hurricane Katrina, the state of Louisiana took over most of the schools within the system, all schools that matched a nominal worst performing metric. Many of these schools and others were subsequently granted operating charters giving them administrative independence from the Orleans Parish School Board, the Recovery School District and or the Louisiana Board of Elementary and Secondary Education At the start of the 2014 school year, all public school students in the NOPS system attended these independent public charter schools, the nation's first to do so. The charter schools made significant and sustained gains in student achievement, led by outside operators such as KIPP, the Algiers Charter School Network, and the Capital One, University of New Orleans Charter School Network. An October 2009 assessment demonstrated continued growth in the academic performance of public schools. Considering the scores of all public schools in New Orleans gives an overall school district performance score of 70.6. This score represents a 24% improvement over an equivalent pre-Katrina metric, when a district score of 56.9 was posted. Notably, this score of 70.6 approaches the score posted in 2009 by the adjacent, suburban Jefferson Parish Public School System, though that system's performance score is itself below the state average of 91. One particular change was that parents could choose which school to enroll their children in, rather than attending the school nearest them. Topic. Libraries Academic and public libraries as well as archives in New Orleans include Monroe Library at Loyola University, Howard Tilton Memorial Library at Tulane University, the Law Library of Louisiana, and the Earl K. Long Library at the University of New Orleans. The New Orleans Public Library operates in 13 locations. The main library includes a Louisiana division that houses city archives and special collections. Other research archives are located at the historic New Orleans Collection and the Old U.S. Mint. An independently operated lending library called Iron Rail Book Collective specializes in radical and hard to find books. The library contains over 8,000 titles and is open to the public. The Louisiana Historical Association was founded in New Orleans in 1889. It operated first at Howard Memorial Library. A separate memorial hall for it was later added to Howard Library, designed by New Orleans architect Thomas Sully. <laughs> Media Historically, the major newspaper in the area was the Times-Picayune. The paper made headlines of its own in 2012 when Owner Advance Publications cut its print schedule to three days each week, instead focusing its efforts on its website, NOLA.com. That action briefly made New Orleans the largest city in the country without a daily newspaper, until the Baton Rouge newspaper The Advocate began a New Orleans edition in September 2012. In June 2013, the Times-Picayune resumed daily printing with a condensed newsstand tabloid edition, nicknamed T.P. Street, which is published on the three days each week that its namesake broadsheet edition is not printed the Picayune has not returned to daily delivery. With the resumption of daily print editions from the Times-Picayune and the launch of the New Orleans edition of The Advocate, now the New Orleans Advocate, the city had two daily newspapers for the first time since the afternoon state's item ceased publication on May 31, 1980. In addition to the daily newspapers, weekly publications include the Louisiana Weekly and Gambit Weekly. Also, in wide circulation is the Clarion Herald, the newspaper of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of New Orleans. Greater New Orleans is the 54th largest designated market area in the U.S., serving 566,960 homes. Major television network affiliates serving the area include WWOZ, the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Station, broadcasts modern and traditional jazz, blues, rhythm and blues, brass band, gospel, Cajun, Zydeco, Caribbean, Latin, Brazilian, African and bluegrass 24 hours per day. WTUL, is the Tulane University radio station. 
Its programming includes 20th century classical, reggae, jazz, show tunes, indie rock, electronic music, soul, funk, goth, punk, hip hop, New Orleans music, opera, folk, hardcore, Americana, country, blues, Latin, cheese, techno, local, world, ska, swing, and big band, kids' shows, and news programming. WTUL is listener supported and non commercial. The disc jockeys are volunteers, many of them college students. Louisiana's film and television tax credit spurred growth in the television industry, although to a lesser degree than in the film industry. Many films and advertisements were set there, along with television programs such as The Real World, New Orleans in 2000, The Real World, Back to New Orleans in 2009 and 2010 and Bad Girls Club, New Orleans in 2011. Two radio stations that were influential in promoting New Orleans-based bands and singers were 50,000 Watt WNOEAM 1060 and 10,000 Watt WTIX 690 AM. These two stations competed head-to-head -head from the late 1950s to the late 1970s. Topic transportation Topic Public transportation Hurricane Katrina devastated transit service in 2005. The New Orleans Regional Transit Authority RTA was quicker to restore the streetcars to service, while bus service had only been restored to 35% of pre-Katrina levels as recently as the end of 2013. During the same period, streetcars arrived at an average of once every 17 minutes, compared to bus frequencies of once every 38 minutes. The same priority was demonstrated in RTA's spending, increasing the proportion of its budget devoted to streetcars to more than three times compared to its pre-Katrina budget. Through the end of 2017, counting both streetcar and bus trips, only 51% of service had been restored to pre Katrina levels. In 2017, the New Orleans Regional Transit Authority began operation on the extension of the Rampart Street. Claude Streetcar Line. Another change to transit service that year was the rerouting of the 15 Frerid and 28 Martin Luther King bus routes to Canal Street. These increased the number of jobs accessible by a 30-minute walk or transit ride, from 83,722 in 2016 to 89,216 in 2017. This resulted in a regional increase in such job access by more than a full percentage point. Topic streetcars New Orleans has four active streetcar lines. The St. Charles Streetcar Line is the oldest continuously operating streetcar line in America. The line first operated as local rail service in 1835 between Carrollton and downtown New Orleans. Operated by the Carrollton and New Orleans RR. Co., the locomotives were then powered by steam engines, and a one-way fare cost 25 cents. Each car is a historic landmark. It runs from Canal Street to the other end of St. Charles Avenue, then turns right into South Carrollton Avenue to its terminal at Carrollton and Claiborne. The Riverfront Streetcar Line runs parallel to the river from Esplanade Street through the French Quarter to Canal Street to the Convention Center above Julia Street in the Arts District. The Canal Streetcar Line uses the Riverfront Line tracks from the intersection of Canal Street and Poydras Street down Canal Street, then branches off and ends at the cemeteries at City Park Avenue, with a spur running from the intersection of Canal and Carrollton Avenue to the entrance of City Park at Esplanade, near the entrance to the New Orleans Museum of Art. The Rampart Street. Claude Streetcar Line opened on January 28, 2013 as the Loyola UPT Line running along Loyola Avenue from New Orleans Union Passenger Terminal to Canal Street, then continuing along Canal Street to the river, and on weekends on the Riverfront Line tracks to French Market. The French Quarter Rail expansion extended the line from the Loyola Avenue – Canal Street intersection along Rampart Street and St. Claude Avenue to Elysian Fields Avenue. It no longer runs along Canal Street to the river, or on weekends on the riverfront line tracks to French Market. The city's streetcars were featured in the Tennessee Williams play, A Streetcar Named Desire. The streetcar line to Desire Street became a bus line in 1948. Topic. Buses Public transportation is operated by the New Orleans Regional Transit Authority. RTA. Many bus routes connect the city and suburban areas. The RTA lost 200-plus buses in the flood. Some of the replacement buses operate on biodiesel. The Jefferson Parish Department of Transit Administration operates Jefferson Transit, which provides service between the city and its suburbs. Topic. Ferries 
New Orleans has had continuous ferry service since 1827, operating three routes as of 2017. The Canal Street Ferry, or Algiers ferry connects downtown New Orleans at the foot of Canal Street with the National Historic Landmark District of Algiers Point across the Mississippi West Bank in local parlance. It services passenger vehicles, bicycles and pedestrians. This same terminal also serves the Canal Street, Gretna Ferry, connecting Gretna, Louisiana for pedestrians and bicyclists only. A third auto, bicycle, pedestrian connects Chalmette, Louisiana and Lower Algiers. Topic. Bicycling The city's flat landscape, simple street grid and mild winters facilitate bicycle ridership, helping to make New Orleans eighth among U.S. cities in its rate of bicycle and pedestrian transportation as of 2010, and sixth in terms of the percentage of bicycling commuters. New Orleans is located at the start of the Mississippi River Trail, a 3,000-mile bicycle path that stretches from the city's Audubon Park to Minnesota. Since Katrina the city has actively sought to promote bicycling by constructing a $1.5 million bike trail from mid-city to Lake Panchartrain, and by adding over 37 miles 60 kilometers of bicycle lanes to various streets, including St. Charles Avenue. In 2009, Tulane University contributed to these efforts by converting the main street through its uptown campus, McAllister Place, into a pedestrian mall open to bicycle traffic. A 3.1-mile bicycle corridor stretches from the French Quarter to Lakeview, and 14 miles of additional bike lanes on existing streets. New Orleans has been recognized for its abundance of uniquely decorated and uniquely designed bicycles. Topic. Roads New Orleans is served by Interstate 10, Interstate 610 and Interstate 510. I-10 travels east-west through the city as the Panchartrain Expressway. In New Orleans East it is known as the Eastern Expressway. I-610 provides a direct shortcut for traffic passing through New Orleans via I-10, allowing that traffic to bypass I-10's southward curve. In addition to the interstates, US 90 travels through the city, while US 61 terminates downtown. In addition, US 11 terminates in the eastern portion of the city. New Orleans is home to many bridges. Crescent City Connection is perhaps the most notable. It serves as New Orleans' major bridge across the Mississippi, providing a connection between the city's downtown on the East Bank and its West Bank suburbs. Other Mississippi crossings are the Huey P. Long Bridge, carrying US-90 and the Hale Boggs Memorial Bridge, carrying Interstate 310. The Twin Span Bridge, a 5-mile causeway in eastern New Orleans, carries I-10 across Lake Panchartrain. Also in eastern New Orleans, Interstate 510, LA-47 travels across the Intracoastal Waterway, Mississippi River Gulf Outlet Canal via the Paris Road Bridge, connecting New Orleans East and suburban Chalmette. The Tolled Lake Panchartrain Causeway, consisting of two parallel bridges are, at 24 miles 39 kilometers long, the longest bridges in the world. Built in the 1950s southbound span and 1960s northbound span, the bridges connect New Orleans with its suburbs on the north shore of Lake Panchartrain via Metairie. Topic. Airports The metropolitan area is served by the Louis Armstrong New Orleans International Airport, located in the suburb of Kenner. Regional airports include the Lakefront Airport, Naval Air Station Joint Reserve Base New Orleans Calendar Field in the suburb of Belle Chasse and Southern Seaplane Airport, also located in Belle Chasse. Southern Seaplane has a 3,200-foot runway for wheeled planes and a 5,000-foot water runway for seaplanes. New Orleans International suffered some damage from Katrina, but as of April 2007, it was the busiest airport in Louisiana and the sixth busiest in the southeast. As of 2017, the airport handled more than 11 million passengers, serving more than 57 destinations. The airport's international service includes non-stop flights to the United Kingdom, Germany, Canada, Mexico, Honduras, Bahamas and Dominican Republic. Topic. Rail The city is served by Amtrak. 
The New Orleans Union Passenger Terminal is the Central Rail Depot and is served by the Crescent, operating between New Orleans and New York City, the City of New Orleans, operating between New Orleans and Chicago and the Sunset Limited, operating between New Orleans and Los Angeles. Up until August 2005, when Hurricane Katrina struck, the Sunset Limited's route continued east to Orlando. With the strategic benefits of both the port and its double-track Mississippi River crossings, the city attracted six of the seven Class I railroads in North America, Union Pacific Railroad, BNSF Railway, Norfolk Southern Railway, Kansas City Southern Railway, CSX Transportation and Canadian National Railway. The New Orleans Public Belt Railroad provides interchange services between the railroads. Topic. Modal characteristics. According to the 2016 American Community Survey, 67.4% of working city of New Orleans residents commuted by driving alone, 9.7% carpooled, 7.3% used public transportation, and 4.9% walked. About 5% used all other forms of transportation, including taxicab, motorcycle, and bicycle. About 5.7% of working New Orleans residents worked at home. Many city of New Orleans households own no personal automobiles. In 2015, 18.8% of New Orleans households were without a car, which increased to 20.2% in 2016. The national average was 8.7% in 2016. New Orleans averaged 1.26 cars per household in 2016, compared to a national average of 1.8 per household. New Orleans ranks high among cities in terms of the percentage of working residents who commute by walking or bicycling. In 2013, 5% of working people from New Orleans commuted by walking and 2.8% commuted by cycling. During the same period, New Orleans ranked 13th for percentage of workers who commuted by walking or biking among cities not included within the 50 most populous cities. Only nine of the most 50 most populous cities had a higher percentage of commuters who walked or biked than did New Orleans in 2013. Topic Notable people Topic Sister cities New Orleans has 11 sister cities, Caracas, Venezuela Durban, South Africa Innsbruck, Austria Juan Les Pins, France Maracaibo, Venezuela Matsu, Chimane, Japan Merida, Yucatan, Mexico Orléans, France Point Nord, Republic of the Congo San Miguel de Tucumán, Argentina Tegucigalpa, Honduras Topic Twinnings and partnerships Batumi, Georgia Topic See also buildings and architecture French Quarter Jackson Square The Cabildo The Presbyterian Pantalba Buildings St. Louis Cathedral French Market New Orleans Mint History Ile d'Orléans, Louisiana Jean Lafitte National Historical Park and Preserve List of People from New Orleans Mississippi River Suite, with an orchestral portrayal of Mardi Gras National Register of Historic Places Listings in Orleans Parish, Louisiana Neighborhoods in New Orleans Downtown New Orleans Uptown New Orleans New Orleans In Fiction New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park New Orleans Mardi Mardi Gras New Orleans Metropolitan Area New Orleans Public Library New Orleans Public Schools New Orleans Regional Transit Authority Streetcars in New Orleans New Orleans Suite, Duke Ellington Recording New Orleans Union Passenger Terminal Orléans, France Preservation Hall Southern Food and Beverage Museum USS New Orleans USS Orleans Parish Topic Notes Topic References Topic Further reading Gitlin, J. December 1, 2009 the Bourgeois Frontier, French Towns, French Traders, and American Expansion. Yale University Press. p. 159. ISBN 978-0-300-15576-1. Thomas J. Adams and Steve Striffler, eds., Working in the Big Easy, The History and Politics of Labor in New Orleans. Lafayette, Louisiana, University of Louisiana at Lafayette Press, 2014. Natalie Dessens, Creole City, A Chronicle of Early American New Orleans. Gainesville, Florida, University Press of Florida, 2015. Rian Fertel, Imagining the Creole City, The Rise of Literary Culture in Nineteenth-Century New Orleans. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Louisiana State University Press, 2014. Scott P. Marler, The Merchant's Capital, New Orleans and the Political Economy of the Nineteenth-Century South. New York, Cambridge University Press, 2013. Lawrence N. Powell, The Accidental City, Improvising New Orleans. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press, 2012. Lakeisha Michelle Simmons, Crescent City Girls, The Lives of Young Black Women in Segregated New Orleans. 
Chapel Hill, NC: University of North Carolina Press, 2015. Rebecca Solnit and Rebecca Snedeker, Unfathomable City, A New Orleans Atlas. Berkeley, California, University of California Press, 2013. Topic external links Official website Archive Index at the Wayback Machine. Official Tourism Website History New Orleans Collection, 1770-1904 from the New York Historical Society Army Corps of Engineers New Orleans Risk and Reliability Report, interactive map showing flood risk Geology and Hurricane Protection Strategies in the Greater New Orleans Area Louisiana Geological Survey Publication on Geology Who's Killing New Orleans? City Journal Louisiana Hurricane History, David Roth. National Weather Service, Camp Springs, M.D., 2010.